Hey loves, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Rai and this is Rai's Reading Corner. And today we are doing a very casual July wrap up. Okay, so as I said, hello, I'm Rai. This is Rai's Reading Corner. If this is the first time you are seeing my face, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps my channel grow and I really appreciate it. So like I said, this is going to be a super kind of casual um, July wrap up. As you can see, I'm just kind of in a sweatshirt. Hair is up. It's a rainy day, cozy reading day. So kind of want to just kind of keep with that mood. So month of July was kind of a weird reading month for me. I feel like I was kind of in a weird headspace. Um, up until the end of July, I had, didn't have many five-star reads. Um, the month ended out really strong, but it definitely started off a week. I only read 11 books, which is great. I read 11 books, which is awesome, but they weren't like great books until the end. And I read a total about 3,211 pages, somewhere around there, which is the lowest I've read all year long. Um, I read some shorter books, some graphic novels, so I think that has a play into it. But like I said, started off eh, but ended really really strong which is important because I need that momentum We're going into August um if you have seen my TBR for August which is TBR Jing I'll put it in the um cards above it's really rough so I need all of the power to read so I'm glad I ended on a good note so how I typically do my wrap ups if you are new I usually start off with my lowest rated books and work my way up to my top rated or my favorite books of the month so let's start off with my lowest rating books okay so my first one was a two-star read I did have a two-star and this is um what I read for summer ween and this is the ice cream man it is a graphic novel the artwork is really cool I love the bright colors I love the artwork but this is so strange honestly I don't even know why I gave it two stars it's probably more of a one star um it's pretty much about this ice cream man and he has like drugs and he gives them to people and it makes them like hallucinate and like see crazy thing I don't know I honestly don't know what I read it was that weird um I really don't much more to say because it's literally like that's what it is and each there's like chapters and each one is a different scenario or a different story um and that's pretty much all I got for you on this book um I liked the first one and I thought the direction was kind of going in somewhere neat and then I started chapter two and it was a completely like different story and I was like wait that's not where I thought it was going so yeah I mean it's like has it's like psychedelic powers I do have the second one I got them from my used bookstore I don't think I'll be reading it I think I'm gonna unhaul it and sell it back to the used bookstore to be completely honest because it's just I don't even know what I read if that says anything <laughs> so the next book I read was actually an ebook and it was the lost sisters by Holly Black I'll put a picture up here this is a novella and it is kind of the retelling not a retelling necessarily but it is the cruel prince from um jude sisters taryn side of the story and so it's really short it's only like 50 pages but it pretty much squishes the whole cruel prince into those pages from her perspective um it was pretty interesting it was kind of cool to see her thoughts on things and how things kind of played out i don't want to tell you too much because obviously it would spoil the cruel prince but it really kind of is interesting to see because there were a lot of kind of deception in that story. Um, but she knew things more than Jude believed that she knew. So trying to say it without giving you much explanation of what the Crow Prince is about or spoiling anything. But it was interesting to see it from that perspective. Um, I'm just not a fan of novellas. Uh, for me, I would have we could have gotten more because I really thought that was interesting. Um, so it was the three stars for me. Just I feel like it's really hard to develop much of something with 50 pages and I know that it's a spinoff from another series so it's not like um we needed a total world building but I just wanted more and I think that's more me than anything else because I just from my past record um short novellas like really short just not something that I love so that's kind of where I'm on on that one Okay, so the next book I read is a book that I've been wanting to read for a really long time, and that is Final Girls by Riley Sager. This was his debut novel, and it's about a girl who um, kind of is labeled as a final girl because she was 
in an event where there were a bunch of people that were killed and she survived and there's two other girls um that they've dubbed final girls from different incidents that has happened throughout many years um and one of those final girls is um found dead and so now she is trying to figure out if this person is after all the final girls or kind of what's going on um to me this was good i liked it um it, this the atmosphere was really done well, which I think Bradley Sager does do a phenomenal job. But to me, it definitely read like a debut novel. There were some things in here that I felt was pacing-wise, kind of was bugged me a little bit. Um, it was a little bit predictable, but I still enjoyed it. I would still say, obviously, Bradley Sager is one of my all-time favorite horror or thriller writers. Um, this is the lowest one that I have given, but I would definitely recommend it to people. It just probably wouldn't be the first choice of Riley Sanger's that I would recommend. But yeah, I mean, it is. I like the Final Girl vibes. Um, I don't watch much horror movies, um, so I was new to this concept of Final Girls, which I know is really popular in movies. They kind of dub them as that. But yeah, I thought it was really good. There was a surprise in here at the end that really took me. The beginning was slow, but towards the end, I did not see one major thing coming. So I will give them points for that. But definitely the ending to me was much stronger than the beginning. So even if you're struggling to the beginning, I would give it a Try it. Keep reading because the ending is worth it. All right, let's go to my four star reads, which I had quite a few. So the first one I read was another one for Summerween, and that was Clown in a Cornfield. I'll put it right up here. This is a typical slasher type um, book. Definitely reminds me of like the 80s, 90s. So we have a girl, she is new at school, and this town kind of has this mysterious, weird clown, clown, clown that's kind of like their mascot. Um, and she goes to like this party, and it's a slasher. Like, the clown starts killing people and that's really all it is um it was kind of predictable like I knew who this whole was behind everything I felt like right from the beginning so I was hoping for a little bit more of a mystery but I didn't get that but I'm telling you right now it definitely gave you the spooky vibes the spooky feels it'd be perfect read for October um it's a quick read um and yeah I mean it definitely is gory so heads up going into that if that's something that you don't enjoy reading I would highly suggest maybe stay away from this book because it is quite gory gory I feel like for a YA book but yeah I mean it is a, it is what it is there's not much depth to it it is a YA horror slasher book and that's what you're gonna get there's nothing really any other lying messages or surprises it is a, a slasher book um so if you like those type of movies I would highly recommend this book but yeah it was a good read it was a quick read and it was a really nice way to start off Summerween okay so my next four star read was again for Summerween and this is Dead Voices by Catherine Arden this is the sequel to Small Pete Small Spaces and it follows a group of friends um who like of an event that happened in the first book and now they are like going like on vacation and to a snow lodge and this book uh follows a main event that happened in the first book and now it kind of plays out in this book I can't say much because this is obviously a sequel but they are really good um middle grade horror story spooky um the first one was my favorite um it takes place with scarecrows and like a cornfield and that setting vibes much more with like my aesthetic and things that I like versus like a snowy setting um so that one did get was a little bit of a higher rating for me um but yeah I mean it, I think it's pretty spooky for a middle grade book um but yeah I really liked this book um uh, there was a little bit of a surprise that I didn't see coming which is nice for a middle grade book like who would think that you'd have that little surprise in a middle grade book but yeah I thought it was good this is the author that writes um the bear and the nightingale which I have not read but I definitely would want to pick it up after reading this series um the newest one comes out I want to say in August so I'm going to be saving that one for um like October I'm thinking so you definitely could read these the two books and then be ready for the third one in the series but yeah it was a good book it's a middle grade book horror um I am I really enjoyed it It was pretty much again kind of as is type book of what you're getting so yeah definitely a good book okay so my next four star read was another book from Summerween and that was Rules for Vanishing by Kate Ellis Marshall this is a horror book about a girl named um Sarah who's her sister Becca had disappeared and they feel like it has something to do with like this road um that you go and you search for this ghost called Lucy Gallows and um she wants to try and figure out what has happened to her sister 
and they pretty much go play this game and try and find Lucy Gales because they think Lucy will lead her to her sister Becca. So this book was really good. It is so twisted and messed up that it literally sometimes I had to reread what I was reading to make sure that I read it correctly. Um, it does give me House of Hollow vibes. So if you liked House of Hollows, I would highly suggest picking this book up as well. Um, I would, I did give it a four instead of a five because again, I felt like some things were a little predictable um, in some ways um, where I wanted more of a shock value or a surprise. But other than that, it was a, again, a great book for spooky season um the cover itself I feel like is really creepy um yeah I enjoyed this book um it was weird so they pretty much are going like, on this journey and there's like different like steps and like challenges that they have to complete to try and find her sister it's really good I feel like you need to go in not knowing much about this book so I don't want to say too much but if you're looking for a good horror spooky read it is a little bit of a chunkier book but it does read rather fast and if you liked House of Hollow by Catherine Sutherland I think it is I would pick this up because it kind of gives you those same vibes of paranormal fantasy but horror at the same time and that's kind of what I would put this realm into as well so Rules are Vanishing it was a good book it was a four star read for me I would recommend it so definitely pick this one up okay if the angle change I apologize I had to pause okay so those were three and four star reads so now we're gonna go to my five star reads of the month which I like I said finished the month out really strong and the last books I read in the month were all five stars and I all read them in the end of the month so let's go over all my five-star read. Okay, so my first five-star read was I continued with my love of the Grishavers and I read King of Scars, which follows um, Nikolai's story. Um, and I love how this intertwined Shadow and Bone and some Six of Crows. Um, so we're following again a dual point. We have Nikolai, we have Zoya, we have um, Nina, and a couple other characters as well. And it just was beautifully written. I love Lee Bardugo. I love her writing and I love her character development her plot development it's just it's so beautifully written to me and I love Nikolai as a character um and this definitely like left at a cliffhanger and so of course I went right and bought the newest book um this is again a duology and that is a thick book so I'm a little nervous and I have to get to it um but I'm hoping to get to it very soon but at the same time I don't want this duology world verse to end so I think maybe I'm gonna put it off a little bit but yeah I don't want to go too much into this because it would spoil everything in the entire Shadow of Bones and Six of Crow series so we're just gonna kind of leave it at that all right my next two five star reads kind of go together because they're part of a series and this is another fantasy one and that is The Wicked King and The Queen of Nothing this is book two and book three of the Cruel Prince series so if you're not familiar with Cruel Prince we have our main character Jude um she was living in our human world and and she is forced to go live in a fairy world where she is living with her older sister and her twin with a fairy that's not so nice. Um, Jude is one of the most badass characters I have ever met in my life. Um, while she's there, she definitely deals with a lot of struggles because she is a human growing up in a fey world. They don't treat her very well. And we have Cardin, who is the biggest bully of them all. But they definitely have, you know, a little thing going on between them. So... Wicked King picks up right where the Crow Prince left off so beautifully and the ending in this was the book. It was just so amazing where I literally put this one down and then jumped right into the Queen of Nothing um, which this cover is absolutely gorgeous. I just adore both these books. I love Jude and um, Carden is one of those characters where you want to not like him but you love him so much and by Queen of Nothing he's just amazing even with his tail and all <laughs> I just love both of these books and they're it's a great series I think Queen of Nothing might be my favorite one um there is a side character that gets introduced to Queen of Nothing which I don't usually like when a new character is thrown into the last book of a trilo tri trilogy we <laughs> can't talk today but I loved this character and I thought she was kind of a good part she was kind of funny so these are both were five stars for me I really enjoyed them I prefer these over the Cruel Prince was a four star read for me, but yeah, great. And then I'm going to be reading the 3.5 book, which I haven't heard the greatest things, but I'll be reading it in August. So stay tuned to how that goes. Okay. So we have Blackout and this was a five star read for me. I read it for the Sunshine Readathon and this is some really big named authors. We have um, Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Ashley Woodfolk, and Nicola Yoon. I'm not a short story reader. However, this was so good. And what I like about this is the all the stories intertwine with one another. So it all takes place um, 
um, in New York City, mostly focused around Brooklyn, but other parts of New York City as well. And there's this huge blackout and it follows different um, characters throughout there trying to get to somewhere. A lot of them are trying to get to this big block party in Brooklyn. So it follows different stories and they're all um, intertwined with like a romance story um, and them trying to figure something out in their relationship or them recounting what it's like in this blackout in the entire New York City is just pure and blackness. So, um, and, or, um, Tiffany D. Jackson's story was my favorite and hers actually, she, hers had multiple, um, sections. So we followed her storyline from beginning to end. The book end, began with hers and I think it ended, no, it didn't end with hers, but it was pretty cool. I think it was the second to last story and just her writing is just phenomenal. I love it. Um, Nick, Nick Stones was really well, good as well. It really touched upon homophobia in sports um and I thought that was really interesting commentary and I think it's so important that um it needs an issue that needs to be discussed and not being able people who identify in the LGBTQIA plus community do not feel comfortable um coming you know saying who they truly are when they are in involved in professional sports or high school sports um however his story was only one story and I really wish his was more um but yeah this was really good it's a quick read it's less than 300 pages and look how beautiful this cover is and it says Brooklyn and yeah it's just gorgeous I highly recommend this book um some heavy hitter writers and it did definitely did not disappoint all right my last book is a book that I just adored and I actually started reading it as a library book and I loved it so much that I had to go and buy it and this is the passing playbook by Isaiah Isaac uh Fitzsimmons this is oh I forgot this one this one has so much queer rep in it it's awesome so I forgot to see that but this <laughs> is again has queer rep in it as well we have a bi rep we have um we have a male male relationship and also trans rep so we have our main character he is attending a new school and he when he comes to this new school he wants to stay stealth because um he had to leave his former school and that was a major reason why was because when he um revealed that he was transgender um it did not go over so well um and he was a huge soccer player at his former school so he would like to join the soccer team here he's in gym class and he has like this amazing kick and um they want to play him on the soccer team so but his parents don't want him to play and fear kind of of what might happen but he does behind their backs and he starts playing and he starts making friends he really feels like he fits in and he starts to kind of form this friendship and relationship with another one of the soccer players. So I think, again, really cool commentary on um, discussion about um, being LGBTQIA plus in sports, which I think is awesome. I think it needs to be talked about and obviously accepted much more. So I feel like it was so important that it was discussed in here. Um, and it just, this was so good. The romance in here, I think the discussion of, um, queer rep was done really well um I can't obviously speak to what the you know how well the trans rep is in this book because I am not transgender so I definitely would suggest that you check out a review from a person that is transgender um but I also loved all the soccer stuff so I'm a huge soccer person my family is a huge soccer person so for me that just made it even better I could see if someone's not into soccer they might not enjoy those parts as much because it definitely is heavy on that part but for me that was a bonus because I love soccer and I knew a lot of what they were talking about so this was a five-star read and I definitely Definitely needed to add it to my collection this is my shelf of all of them of like YA some adult uh queer books so I will definitely be adding that one to the shelf so yeah overall I started off kind of weak but ended really really strong I had a total of one two three four I think five five star reads right in a row and those were my last five books of the month so the month ended out really strong even though it started off like kind of weak so let me know if you read any of these books what your thoughts and opinions are on them um let me know down in the comments below how your reading month was in July what was your favorite book least favorite book let me know so if you want to take this crazy journey with me make sure you press that subscribe button if you would like to be my friend on any of my other social media platforms like TikTok Instagram and um Twitter, all the information is down below. So stay kind, loves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.